Um, Jan Guidon will uh, talk about Yazep, and he will also have a workshop with demo and live hacking on it afterwards, starting um, at six. Well, I will stay here uh, to watch the other presentations, so there will not be a workshop per se. So just contact me, come and uh, have a chat, or just uh, click, click okay. on the website and the links. Okay, afterwards we will continue on these topics. So uh, if you're interested, make in contact with him for the workshop. And now it's your. Thank you. So good evening. Thank you very much for being here. I'm very glad to be here because I've not been in Berlin for 10 years. For last time it was for another little project, another CPU, but this time it was a uh, Huge thing, not a little tiny speck like this. Um, uh, the slide will be in three parts. Um, there will be what? There will be the presentation of the project. There will be description of the software um, or the ISA uh, instruction set uh, architecture. Then there will be uh, architecture uh, implementation detail. Well, not too much, but just enough to, to have a little taste. Um, thank you for Pierre, uh, to Pierre, because he lent me his NetBSD laptop. So it shows that things can run everywhere. Open source is great because uh, just transfer Firefox works on NetBSD. Yeah, I'm saved. Thank you to Mr. Tan, who has explained a lot of details about how to design a CPU. And um, I have 28 minutes for the rest. <laughs> so um, we, uh, in the description of the workshop of the presentation, I spoke a bit about Arduino, and it's about um, the, the the current uh, hype thing, and uh, it's also uh, it. Exp uh, it just shows that people need to access and want to touch and want to, to be able to use. So uh, the processor that I am designing right now is around that principle. So what I did is a big clicodrome. So uh, let's start with the, um, with the, the first slides. Uh, uh, no, just a little note. Um, the tools that I use are Nano, GNU Nano, the uh, editor, grep for finding where I, I, did I use this function, Firefox. So yes, we don't need much to create a CPU, but a lot of time to, and to polish things. So um, I'll tell a tiny bit about myself. I'm Yann Guidon. I've been uh, active on the FCPU project. I have my little single person company known as IGDES, where I do a lot of lead design. I help artists to uh, create and implement and make it work and make it last. So I use a lot of microcontrollers and uh, often microcontrollers don't cut it. So uh, I'm, it's, uh, the YAZEP is a single man uh, project, but uh, with a few friends and a few uh, contacts, it's uh, much more nice. For example, Pierre, for example, Sebastian, who invited me, and a few other who can't be there, and uh, hi to the stream. <laughs> and what, I'm, what it is about, it is a microprocessor that is embedded. It's uh, something that is not designed to run Linux. It's not, not something that is designed to run scientific computations. That was for the FCPU. But uh, the name, I chose it because uh, it was free. And, uh, it was free. So yet another small embedded processor. And uh, I discovered that it is also uh, uh, oriental name, probably linked to Joseph. So, Yezeb, jo okay, so that's why I speak about the Yezeb, which has a home called uh, Yezeb.org, where you will find that. Well, usually you will find uh, this welcome message with a little um, 
little introduction window. It's all Windows based, based all written in JavaScript, so better use a uh, recent browser. And you will find, um, you will find uh, the slides if you want to follow uh, through the, um, if you want to follow through the, um, the uh, at home. So you, go, you click on archives, which, which goes to uh, subdomain, then you click to EHSM, and you see the same slides as I, I, as I display right now. So um, this interface that I have shown is uh, uh, all in one. It's um, mostly a CPU design framework, but when you, when you design a CPU, you don't only design um, architecture, you need as we have seen uh, in the last presentation, you, ne you need test benches, you need to test um, uh, against existing software, so you need to code software, so you, it's an IDE, Integrated Development Environment. And uh, it's, it wasn't born in a week, while well, it was born as a crazy idea 10 years ago, it was a bit of a joke, like, like the DCPU 16, which is uh, made for a game. But uh, this one uh, was created because uh, during a Skunk Works project, we were handed a proposal for using ARM licenses for SOC. And I was like, <laughs> I can do the FCPU, so I can do my own little embedded processor. So 10 years later, yes! <laughs> Then uh, 10 years ago, almost right now, I made the last uh, major FCPU presentation at the CCC in Berlin. So I return uh, now knowing that I've done some work that can, keep, that can be presented. So I'm, I'm quite pride, proud. And uh, afterwards, there was a lot of um, personal um, changes because I needed, uh, I was out of university and building a career. And uh, th that tiny little uh, CPU became a good hobby because uh, it touches on everything and I was alone so I was quiet to do all I wanted. And then uh, seeing how things accumulated, I seen that um, I had accumulated after many years quite a lot. And so uh, the last years have been more more serious. Oh shit! It's getting, it's getting serious. So um, two years ago, I rebooted the the whole project. I had the old website that is also in the archives. Um, click if you dare, but it's preserved for history and shame too. But I reorganized everything around a window manager that we have seen. That organizes the, uh, the information very easily and one click can open new things. It's, it's wonderful because it, it makes an all-in-one system which can come handy very in, in, in a lot of situations. And uh, after a lot of work and uh, the last six months have been very active and I'm going to freeze and uh, start Yazeb 2013. And I told you the little backstory of why it sprung to life. It started as a back of an envelope uh, joke because, hey, okay. And uh, the Skunk Work project died, but the good thing, the fun things remained. Well, I was alone, I could do it. I was God! Yes. And um, there's also, um, that's also, um, so I have listed a lot of um, reasons for doing a CPU alone, but yes, it must be fun. And that's why it lasted, and that's why it's still uh, alive and growing slowly, slowly. But 10 years after, I have a few things. So there's another reason. Um, uh, because soon it will be too late. Have you heard about the Windows 8? Um, it's the new brand new thing uh, from Microsoft. Well, it's not as easy as that because 
Uh, one of my motto for a long time is that there can be no free software without free hardware. It's, it's something that is still valid because the, um, even the Free Software Foundation is getting more um, is getting more sensitive to this pro to this problem because now you cannot um, uh, you when you buy a new uh, computer loaded with Windows 8 it's designed to run only on that operating system so you can't easily hack it as easily as uh, the others it's become it's becoming a mess so uh, owning the platforms is uh, a means to own our software and we don't want to be deprived of it. Um, there's also an another problem is, uh, that Pierre uh, told me, it's active management technology. So in fact, uh, on some uh, Intel platforms, there is a hidden CPU. And uh, that's, uh, that that can uh, that is another way of um, hmm? uh, just look at AMD. So okay, so I'll make my own CPU. <laughs> it's going to be a little problem because there are so many patents. So uh, that's why I chose to start completely from scratch and have fun with uh, uh, not classical technologies because they are all um, covered by patents and it's, it's completely useless to try to, to do something else. So uh, I'm doing some quick and dirty development, I'm having fun, I'm coding things, I'm doing things that are to totally unrelated and uh, in the end uh, I have some very interesting, uh, it's, it's just trying to not be conventional. So there are drawbacks and some advantages. So, okay, uh, I won't have GCC, well, fuck it. So, um, <laughs> so in the end, the Yazap is original because it has to escape potential patterns. It is totally libre in the, main, in the sense of, uh, it's not just uh, free as, as in free beer. I don't put it there and say, okay, do what you want with it. No, um, it's, it's, uh, it's, it is a, a, also a web-based, so I chose FROGPL. I've chosen also a method that are contrary to the FCPU project because FCPU has problems, so I try to address them, and I do the reverse. And um, it's not a big, uh, it's not uh, something that is going to, 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 to mine your bitcoins. And also it's mainly a web-based uh, project. So far I have a quite stable and uh, instruction set architecture. Uh, it's, we celebrated uh, a few, uh, one month ago the 10th anniversary, so uh, I wanted to, to, to celebrate it here, but uh, too late. And um, it is the, um, there's a first small subset that is coded in JavaScript and VHDL, so it is um, a cross simulation, so I, um, I can verify that my code because there is, it's totally original, I have nothing to test it against. So I build little tools that, te that test each other against each other. So it's snowballing. So in, whenever I add a, a tool, I test the other tools, and when I do it, so it starts slowly at first, but, and um, we'll see eventually a little demonstration. I made it work on FPGA um, a, lit, um, a little uh, in March, so that's the first uh, milestone. And um, it, hopefully, because we are speaking about Arduino, there is another kid in town. It's called Raspberry Pi, and I would like to make a lot, uh, as much as possible, run on it. So what we see with the web interface is. Um, mostly running on Raspberry Pi, so. 
And um, so 2013 is uh, 10th, uh, 11th year, so it's go coming out of submar submarine mode. And uh, I'll try to have uh, more cycles releases. And uh, there's a lot of, pr uh, of work uh, to do. Hopefully, I will work, uh, I will continue to work with, um, uh, with Pierre on porting uh, and on porting on Defora and uh, dealing with the compiler uh, issues. So let's be, let's speak a little bit about the programming um, programming model. It's a bit um, inspired by the Cra uh, Seymour Cray's CDC 6600, which was the fastest computer uh, 50 years ago. But it was also very well designed and very inspiring. So uh, I merged I merge, uh, two aspects of the, um, uh, of the two CPUs that it contained. So it's, ver it's made to be very simple, very orthogonal, and made for hacking it to, because I knew it would evolve. So um, uh, the, the structure of the instruction is very orthogonal. There are, um, also, there are two other um, in interesting aspects. There is no jump or branch instructions because I just write to the PC. Well, there is a call instruction because I can't emulate it. And there is no load or store instruction. It's going through registers. So it simplifies uh, the instruction set even more. And here are uh, all the current uh, defined uh, instruction. There are 46. And so um, I can move everything without breaking the actual um, instruction uh, encoding. So if I change something in the map, I won't have to redesign the instruction decoder or the pipeline. And it, as we see, it's uh, 16 or 32 bits. We just have uh, to specify one bit to uh, define the length. And it has a lot of um, it, it has a lot of flexibility because um, any opcode can ha can access to any combination of uh, operands. So we have source, uh, destination, immediate. So that's very easy for com for comp compiler writing. So what I did uh, to to create the the, the design. I, I saw how the end, what bits I had in the instructions and started um, seeing how things would go where and what bits I needed when. So we, we have um, a few encodings. And um, by combining everything, we can see what is really needed in hardware. And um, another int int interesting aspect, which I borrowed a bit from ARM is that uh, one encoding allows all the opcodes to be predicated. So uh, it's very easy, even uh, it's still easy for compilers. So I have so far chosen certain conditions that might change in the future because um, uh, some, if I do microcontrollers, they, they handle bits and uh, application processors uh, handle different things. So that's still, that can still evolve. Uh, another uh, interesting aspect is that um, uh, th there are four bits left in this instruction encoding. So we could update pointers, so we can do post-incremented, pre-decremented, et cetera, which is very handy and will compact the, the, the code. We, I, let's, um, th there's a lot to say about memory access. Uh, I'll just say that there are uh, five pairs of registers, and uh, there's address and data. And uh, it might sound a bit crazy, but when you look at the P5, the Pentium, uh, Pentium Pro and the derivatives, um, when you have a store instruction, it gets decoded and split in two instructions internally, which is, uh, um, no, it's uh, 
the, not the store, but the um, load instruction, check the address, and then the, when you get the data from memory, put it in the register. So, well, I do it, and uh, it's even easier for uh, software scheduling. If we have uh, crazy pipelines, we can already um, manage and plan ahead for the data length and see if we have sh uh, fast or and slow memories, we can optimize already. And um, so I have five minutes to tell you how to make the YAZEP, at least the first implementation, which I call micro YAZEP because it's just a subset. And uh, I made it a, a bit dumb but because I have to start somewhere. And um, it's, it, it was, was meant, meant to be used, used in a big, big project, project I had last year, year which, which allowed it to, to be boosted. And, and it targets, it targets uh, small, small FPGAs, FPGAs like uh, those ones. So I brought a few. So here we see the smallest FPGA that can fit it. It's um, 1,500 uh, logic gates with four blocks of RAM. It's uh, easy, it's, uh, it can be targeted. Uh, it is preloaded with AVR8 uh, core. So uh, it's, it's not very powerful, but it's very handy if you need a microcontroller. There are uh, much more powerful um, uh, boards, but the tiny, this tiny spec is a few dollars. So why, why, uh, why bother with, uh, why bother with uh, microcontrollers? So when we need um, a six, uh, so the the small one can handle a 16-bit version, and the larger one can handle a 32 bits. So we can do more data processing. Well, it's still wrapped. It's, uh, it's about 50 euros and made in Italy. So, um, and how is it made? Well, there's no mystery, paper and pen. <laughs> so like Mr. Tan explained, it starts with a lot of planning and, um, and thinking. But before I reached this point, there were a lot of, um, of steps. Because in the beginning, uh, I, uh, the SOC I was uh, targeting was using SDRAM. So the idea was to use a risk core and map the, uh, the um, uh, memory interface with the registers to simplify. But after, uh, the project uh, did not evolve as planned. So the, the, uh, the idea of accessing memory through registers uh, uh, remained, and I made a smaller version with just uh, static RAM, so with, uh, without the complexity of SDRAM. And um, it allows it to fit in much smaller C uh, FPGAs. One interesting thing is that the, the instructions are quite a bit complex apparently, but uh, for performance, the most important thing is to know where to get the data. They are always at the same place. And the th only thing that changes is where you, you find the register that gets written. But even that, it's just a few gates to determine it, unless, uh, unlike the x86 where it's all over the place. So in the end, that's uh, one view of the micro YASEP, we have the register set that is read at the first cycle. There are two phases, in fact. So first we read the registers, or we read the um, operands, and then we, um, we just perform the computations. That's very simple. And it's, it follows the structure of the instruction. So we have the first part of the instruction that comes, and then the second part, tells us where to write. And when we have that system, we, we see that well, the uh, register set sits alone and we can reuse it because uh, we need it to determine if we write the register. So we have to test things. So in fact, I can reuse, I can use twice the register set, so it's very handy. And in the end, so you remember the, um, uh, 
you remember this big di diagram, but it's not that complex. It's layers of uh, things. First, we start. What a computer does is just fetch the next instruction. So we have uh, the PC register, which contains the address of the instruction. We add one all, all the time, all the time, all the time, and we fetch instructions. And, but uh, in this case, the only thing is that we add one only if it's a long instruction, so we, we put a multi, uh, multiplexer. Then we uh, need to know where to write the, the destination. So we, we have to select from three fields where uh, the address of the destination register. The next, next thing is the meat of the CPU. It's the data path. So we have the, the two source operands. We fetch, we select uh, the source registers. We, um, uh, we operate on them and uh, multiplex them, etc. Then we have to uh, steer everything. We have to select. We have to know what to select where, depending on the opcode. And finally, there's a par another parallel path that says, OK, all that you did is fine, but uh, let's, let's abort it. So it's a uh, final, the, finally, the condition path. And that's how uh, we can make it uh, Turing complete, because uh, we can uh, steer the instructions and uh, all the data. So normally, there's a uh, little demonstration uh, if we have uh, three minutes. Hmm? Hmm? OK, so th um, there's no, not enough time. So um, well, just contact me, because I'll stay here for the next presentations. And uh, there, there is, um, the, there are, we can make simulations on Firefox of the uh, CPU running with a tiny frame buffer, and uh, that's, uh, that's a very f fun thing to do. Thank you for your attention, and see you later. <laughs> okay. Thank you for your talk. And while we are preparing the next presentation, I think there is room for two or three questions, because I need the time anyway to prepare the notebook. Raise your hands. No questions? Uh, the point is we have to prepare the beamer and so on. I don't know. Florian? We have to disconnect, sorry. 